Hey guys, welcome to the first video for the project Titan X. So this is the new NVIDIA Titan X Pascal. So it's um, the, let's say, bigger version of the GTX 1080. Uh, what is interesting is that you can see GeForce GTX on here, also on the backplate, which I already removed, is written GeForce uh, GTX Titan X. But uh, still, NVIDIA only calls it Titan X. It's kind of uh, confusing. Not sure what's behind it. So what is this project about? So in total, we will have around three or four videos about this special video card. We will do all kind of modifications um, you can think of. So the first thing we will do is normal air overclocking. Then we will do um, power modif modifications to unlock the power target. Then we will do a GPU volt mod, which means we will unlock the voltage control for this card so we can push the voltage a little bit to see what, um, what is the benefit of an increased voltage uh, for the GPU itself. Then we will mount an EK water blocks uh, GPU full cover block and see what the influence of a better cooling solution would be. I will use a special chiller which has a, a water temperature of around 16 degrees which makes it very suitable for overclocking so the card will have really really nice temperatures. Also, I, I don't only have one card, I have four cards in total. So we will also do four um, cards in quad SLI and see what the benefits of quad SLI are. So the thing is, even nowadays, um, after NVIDIA's promotion of two-way SLI and the new um, high bandwidth SLI bridge, you can still use uh, quad SLI with four cards, not only in benchmarks, but also in games. And we will do a quick test of how the games scale with multi-GPUs. So um, if you use an old SLI bridge, we will take a look at the scaling and see um, how the game benefits from two cards to three cards to four cards to see how it still works. So in this video, we will just talk about the technical details first and then we will later do um, air overclocking with this card without any modifications just to see where we are at. So to talk about the basics, this card has um, 12 billion transistors on the GPU, which I think is really, really impressive considering the fact that you have to, well, produce 12 billion transistors on a GPU and they all have to work, obviously. So compared to the GTX 1080, which only has 7.2 billion transistors, this is a pretty big step forward. The GPU is manufactured in 16 nanometer process, um, similar to the GTX 1080, of course, and it clocks at um, a base clock of 1417 MHz and NVIDIA claims that the boost clock would be 1531. I can already tell you that the boost clock is already um, much higher in, um, in load on games or even benchmarks, but we will take a look at that in detail later. So another thing is this card has 12 GB memory, which is also quite impressive compared to the GTX 1080, which has 8 GB of memory. Also, um, the memory bandwidth is slightly increased with a 384-bit interface on this card, while um, the GTX 1080 only, only had 256-bit. Also, um, you can see this card has an increased uh, power supply, so you can see it has an 8-pin connector and a 6-pin connector, while the GTX 1080 only had an 8-pin uh, connector. So, uh, yeah. We will not do um, power modifications or volt modifications with a stock cooler simply because the stock cooler would not be able to handle the additional um, wattage. So yeah, the first thing we will do is overclock on air. So let's take a look at that. Spilling liquor, got a bad habit. Put your money back, son. I'd rather shatter little whack dreams and your chitter chatter really isn't mattering. A couple duggies cook a fucker up and put him on a platter. Fucking J.U. Della, son, is small and fatter. I'll be lanky, taller, and we ballin' passing rhythm off of the bat. A lot of motherfuckers all talk on the track. This apocalypse rap smash, they all whack. Put them off the map, we laugh on. Let the bottles crack, I let them swallow sack while I swallow the jack. I'm a little past my limit, I'm hollering madness in the whip mashing. 105 on the dash, cut the grass low, finna kill a snake ass. Bang. Get that money so it ain't a problem and the bitches holler for the fame. 
Double your cup, what? Get your buzz up. You know that you bugging for fame. This what they want, right? This what they... So before overclocking, we will take a look at the system first. As you can see, I'm using the Core i7 6950X, which is clocked at 4.5 gigahertz and at a voltage of 1.41 volt. 10 cores, 20 threads, of course, 1.41 volt is kind of much. But as you can see in core temp, uh, the temperatures are, are only around 19, 20 degrees. That's because I'm using a water chiller, which is uh, keeping the temperature of the water around uh, 15 to 16 degrees. So, of course, then the voltage of 1.41 volt is fine. You can also see I'm using the Rampage 5 Edition 10 and I'm using 32 gigabyte of memory and the cache clock is 3400 megahertz and also the memory is 3400 C11 and of course that's quite tense but that's um, mainly because I'm using a higher voltage on the memory of around 1.8 volt. 1.8 volt is of course not suitable for 24-7 computing but that's what I'm using for my um, overclocking benchmark rig. So let's take a look at GPU-C and of course you can um, completely ignore the clocks on the bottom. Uh, what matters more is if you start the render test and go to the sensor tab and check the real clocks under 3D. So obviously because the render test is only a light load you can see the clocks are not as um, actually they are higher than in the actual game test because the power consumption is a lot lower. Uh, yeah, still you can see the GPU temperature is around uh, 63 de uh, degrees and the uh, VCC is 1.6 volt. The highest you can go is actually 1.07 volt. Uh, some cards can do up to 1.09 volt, but that's the maximum you can do with those cards. For more, we will uh, need a volt modification, which we will do later. And you can see in the render test, the card boosts around 1780 roughly. To overclock the card, I will use uh, the MSI Afterburner. Of course, you can use any other software such as ASUS GPU Tweak or EVGA Precision X. All those tools are suitable to overclock the card. The first and the most important step you can do is unlocking the power target. And well, you don't really unlock, but you can push the power limit from 100 to 120%. That gives the card additional 20% um, of power consumption, which is still fine with the um, stock cooler <clears throat> mainly because it's uh, limited by the temperature and if you hit the temperature target the card will clock down to stay within the uh, power target. So I tested four cards in total so far and um, from what I can tell you can easily go plus 100 or plus 150 on the core clock. Um, actually I think all cards should be able to do that. Uh, some cards might even be able to do plus 250. You have to check that on the card yourself. Also, the memory clock at plus 500 should be really safe on all cards. Um, depending on how good the memory on your card is, um, most cards should be able to do plus 600 as well, maybe plus 700. I also already saw plus 800 out there, but more uh, depends on the card and you, and you just have to try what's working for your card. So of course my goal is in the end to break a 3D mark world record, but still of course for you guys it matters um, how the influence of OC is to the gaming performance. So that's why I tested uh, The Witcher 3 and also the 3D mark Fire Strike Extreme. So here you can see um, the Witcher 3 test results. So stock, the performance or the clock was um, around uh, 1658 uh, megahertz. Um, up to almost uh, 1700 megahertz and this resulted in a minimum FPS of 107 while the average FPS was around 123 FPS. So after increasing the power target by 20% and not touching anything else you can see that the clocks increased um, by around 50 to 60 um, to 1712 up to 1734 megahertz and this resulted in a mi minimum FPS of 109 and an average FPS of around 124. So we have a very small increase of around 1 to 2 FPS so not even 2% which is not that much but increasing the fan speed by 100% you can see a quite big gain in uh, megahertz so you can see around 100 megahertz gain uh, up to 1785 by just increasing the fan speed to uh, 100% and this is also already a great indicator to see how, how this card will scale with better cooling. 
So essentially, if you push the fan speed to 100% and you can see a big gain in performance and also in clock, you can also imagine that if you mount a water cooler on this card, you will increase the clocks drastically. So that's what we are aiming for in the end. But still, let's take a look at the result. Um, 110 FPS uh, on 100% fan speed in minimum and also 126 average FPS. So that's already an increase of around uh, 2 to 3 percent and by overclocking the card and increasing the power target by 20 percent we pushed the card to 1924 megahertz and this resulted in 112 minimum fps and the average fps around 133 so that's an increase of around 8 percent which is kind of cool but not enough that's why we will mount uh, the water cool block from ek um, water blocks in the next video but first let's take a look at the Firestrike Extreme results which I also have here. So stock we have around 13k um, total score and 70 FPS in the GT1. I just took GT1 as a reference because the influence of the CPU speed is kind of small on the GT1. So this is more like an indicator for games as well. So by increasing the power target of 20% you can see a very small gain in uh, the total score of around, well, of around 100 points and an increase of around 1 FPS in the GT1. So pushing the fan to 100% you can see the points increased by 400 uh, compared to stock and this also increased uh, the GT1 by around 2.5 FPS which is already kind of good and of course the best thing is if we overclock the card ourselves and I managed to get around 1900 the same as in Witcher 3 um, megahertz and also uh, plus 20% power target and this resulted in uh, 14k total score which is really nice and uh, the GT1 was around 76 FPS, so that's an increase of around 8% as well, similar to The Witcher 3. So I'm pretty sure um, doesn't really depend on the game. You should um, get about 5 to 8% um, uh, performance gain just by overclocking the card on air. By moving the power target to around uh, plus 20, um, leave the fan on auto and increase uh, the core clock by around 100 to 150 megahertz. All right, that's it for um, this quick video about error overclocking. As I said before, next video will be um, with a water block. So from uh, EK water blocks, I have the acrylic um, nickel version here. We will mount this cooler and we will do uh, the power mod, um, power limit modification and also the volt um, modification all in one video. So stay tuned for that. If you have any specific requests, uh, questions about this card, I'm still testing. So just let me know in the comments and I, I'm pretty sure I can answer your questions in the next video. Cut the grass loaf in the killer snake ass fame. Get that money so it ain't a problem in the bitches holler for the fame. Double your cup, what? Get your buzzer. You know that you bugging for fame. This what they want, right? This what they